I don't know if you can imagine what it would have felt like to have lived in the Stone Age every day, sitting around open fires, using the fire to make mend your tools, cooking over, and um, generally living in the wilderness, but knowing the land. But further more than that, can you imagine what it felt like when a stranger came from far, far away? He would have had some stories to tell and some skills to show. Well, this happened. And on this occasion, this guy brought something very interesting along. And this particular stone that you're looking at right now is called malachite. And if you put malachite into the fire, it reduces down and becomes copper. And since we were in the science of putting stones into fire, I'll also introduce this to you. This stone here is called cassiterite, and if you put that into the fire, what you get is you get tin. Well, that really is messing with things. Basically, way back then, it would have been alchemy, like magic. Taking two rocks, two elements, and mixing them together, and creating what we now know as an alloy. Well, today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the malachite, take the tin, and do exactly that. I'm going to smelt them down, and us, me and you are going on an adventure into the Bronze Age. Come on, let's go. These are the types of tools that are going to be making, and um, this particular course is going to be really special because what they're doing is they're going to be smelting malachite. But on this occasion, not Konganese, they're going to use malachite from the Great Orm copper mines in Landidno in Wales. And then they're going to be smelting tin, which is, this is actual Cornish tin called cassiterite. And um, I don't know in our time that these two elements have been added together. So. The whole crazy idea of this is going to be good fun and um, it's not an assured outcome. And these characters over here are breaking down. I'm sure someone tried at least yeah. at a small point in time. What they're doing there is they're breaking down the clay with these up unfired bricks and the last furnace. They've got to break it down so they can mix it up and then put it all back together. The clay only acts as a glue. If you've got too much of it, then it's all going to crack. And then what they're going to do is they're going to build a furnace, much like the bucket that they're putting the stuff into. At this point, what the guys are doing is they are mixing the, mixing the grog and the clay together and they're throwing it just like a pot of wood get all the air out and then these are their little bricks that are eventually going to weld together. Oh, that's beautiful. That's fantastic. And then to make matters worse, they're going to be using wax to try and carve these things out of. Now that sounds easy on the surface of things, but what wax has a great tendency to do is to hold on to whatever you try and approach it with. So they're going to have to come up with methods like heating the wax up and carving it in different ways. And uh, then they're going to invest that with a clay jacket, dry it all out, and then burn the wax out and pour the bronze in. <laughs> So now we're just starting to get into the wax. It's not the easiest material to play with in the world, is it? No, it's quite hard. So this is the malachite that's just, just gone into the furnace. I'm going to roast that until it goes black. And then we're going to turn it over, tip it into the charcoal, and let it burn down 
and soon the flames will go green. And then it goes. So now we're entering the vital stages of um, wrapping our wonderful clay figurines in the grog and dung and clay mixture. So it's day two now and it's first thing in the morning and what we're about to do is we're about to have a look inside our smelting pit and see what the malachite turned into. So what do we have? Well, something there. Let's tip it. Let's have a look. There's oh, something there's welded a, into the bottom. There's a mass. It? Look, whoa! All right. And yeah. that's it, is it? Yeah, whole mass come out in one mass. Wee. Wee. It's got some weight. It's got some weight. Should we find out how much? Oh yeah. Just press that button. So we put 500 grams in there. We got 311 grams. No. I think it needs um, hitting with a hammer. That's huge. What see? Well, there's any slag mixed in it. Okay, let's see what's, what we've got. What is happening? Oh, it's definitely, there's definitely copper in there. So you've got a combination of things going on. Yeah, there's this uh, sort of white, um, almost uh, China-like substance there. I think what you've got is you've got elements that are very, very pure, then you've got pieces of slag which have got copper in them that yeah. would probably need to be re-smelted. nugget like that. So what we have here is we have a nice system. Um, obviously the little clay thing, last night we did actually um, use it to smelt with, and then what we did is we progressed on from that and we poured bronze from it. But this system here is going to work out really well for us. In fact, we haven't even used the bellows and we've got molten bronze in there. So I've made up a nice little soft seat and they can operate this bellow system like this. Look. I know that's technically not Bronze Age because we would have been doing it with earth and everything like that, but we know that all this is possible. And over here, what we have is the kiln. So in the kiln, I've put our moulds that we made yesterday and what we've done is we've burnt out the wax and I've just turned it over so it's venting, it's breathing off, it's like the last breath at the moment. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move that from there to here. We're going to dig around in there and try and find the crucible and pour that in there. All right, this is where things get exciting. You're going to take over the bellows for yep, me then? Yep, I'm ready. You just keep the heat on that for me. Somewhere down deep inside of here, we should have a furnace. We should have a crucible even. If I'm really lucky, we'll have some molten bronze. 
in the bottom. Lovely job. Oh yes. Get that back in there. Nice job. That went in alright, didn't it? We have a little um, Bronze Age X. Well, there's been a variety of outcomes to uh, this. I'll show you around and show you what people have got going on. So this is Gabriel, and uh, he made a little kind of spear point. Nice one. Cheers. Over here we have Ian, and um, well he's made a pretty good sword, but that was his sand calf, and this was his little flat axe that he was working on. The last one has yet to come out of the um, furnace. Now one of the things we said we were going to do was to smelt this cassiterite and try and extract the tin from that. Well we put it into the crucible for about an hour and a half and roasted it under the same conditions as we did with the um, malachite and as you can see we've changed it but um, the result wasn't something that I really expected so we'll put that under the hammer and just see what we see what we've actually done. The problem we're getting here is no evidence of any tin. What I was actually expecting was to be able to render it down to a material like this, which once again still doesn't look like tin, but this is some roasted um, cassiterite that I was once given. So on this particular occasion, we've decided to use this. This is called um, lead-free solder. So you could call that a failed experiment, or you could literally say that um, archaeology is an experimental um, subject, and uh, we've experimented, and on this occasion we didn't quite get the uh, tin that we were looking for, but um, we were still able to do the bronze because we had the common and the modern tin. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed the journey. You've been watching uh, Will Lord, and uh, I hope that's inspired to you to like, share, subscribe and follow. All the best, guys.